What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Shiv here. All right, so today we're going to be talking about, yes, a Murloc Paladin. And yes, I've got my Lady Liadra skin. All right, so Murloc Paladin. Now, any of you who've ever watched me stream know how much I kind of dislike Murloc Paladin, as well as most things Paladin. My general consensus is people who play it should be taken out back and beaten within an inch of their life and probably go for that extra inch as well. I digress. However, in this meta, it's probably one of the stronger counter decks out there because almost everybody is playing Secret Paladin. Almost everybody is playing an aggressive deck. Almost everybody is playing with a Reno deck. So, I mean, there's a lot of really tough things to face and counter. Well, guess what? This deck does pretty damn good against all three of those. It even is able to hold its own against Shaman, to some degree. It's able to hold its own against uh, Control Warrior, a lot. Um, Druids do give it a little bit of indigestion, but the deck can actually handle it to, to some degree. So, when this deck got handed to me by Toyta... I I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Really? Really, man? It's like, dude, think about it. It, it It's perfectly s situated in this meta. It'll work fine. I'm like, fine, I'll play it. And lo and behold, four wins, one loss. Three wins, two loss. Five wins, one loss. Five wins, one... I was like, whoa. You know? It, it, it did pretty damn good. It did pretty damn good all around. And what I noticed about this deck is it had so many aspects of recovery and so many ways to kind of balance out bad plays that it worked pretty fucking good. So even the average idiot can play this deck. Matter of fact, as we're about to get into the playthrough, I'm going to point out where I fucked up in one play that could have actually cost me the game, but because the deck had so many recovery options, I was okay. So awesome alrighty then so let's get into the card breakdown starting off is humility great mitigation tool this is a card that kind of had some popularity especially with Kodos or stampeding Kodo but then kind of fell out of favor but it's kind of coming back right now and in this deck it works really good as a one-off tech uh, especially when you combine it you know with a few other things the fact that you already have outer peacekeepers adding basically another one to the mix that only costs one mana is extremely powerful. The fact that you could also use it to proc a wild pyromancer is also pretty damn good. Though you do feel kind of shitty when you're using it just to pop the shield off of um, something and then you're immediately following it up with an equality just to make sure you kill that thing. It doesn't feel very good. I'm going to tell you right now. It feels pretty fucking horrible. Um... But shit, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Alright, next up we've got Equality. If I've gotta explain why this is in the card uh, with the Wild Pyromancers and the Consecrations, you guys haven't been playing Hearthstone very long. Alright, but truth be told, Equality is one of the greatest combination cards for clearing a board. Paladins have been living off this card forever and a day. Alright, Bluegill Warriors, it's a Murloc deck. You're gonna have them. And the fact that they act as, well... A removal tool in the early game. Oh, you got a knife juggler. Fuck off. It doesn't matter. They're coming back at the end of the game anyway, so fuck it. Use them. Doomsayer, because fuck you, aggro. Now, yes, this is mostly in here to counter aggro in the early game, but it can be used very cleverly in the back end. Alright, you mitigate down their biggest minions, you play down a Doomsayer, they can't really deal with it, they're low on cards, they have no options, you play it behind a Sludge Belcher, yeah, I know, that, that seems like a crazy fucking idea, sacking your own Sludge Belcher, but if you're talking about being on turn 9, going into turn 10, and you have already played all your Murlocs, and you've got the goddamn anything that can happen, you just need to prevent them from playing, say, a Tyrion or whatever, good fucking play. Great fucking play play it's won me several games uh all right loot hoarder because it's a combo deck you gotta have draw novice engineer yes the little pint size midget is back and she works pretty good in this deck there's only one of because well loot hoarder is better but yeah she does pretty fucking amazing wild pyromancer because we have a quality true fucking fact acolyte of pain because 
Card draw. Aldor Peacekeepers, mitigation tool. Murlocs, because we're running Murlocs, so yes, you have to have a war leader. You, you really can't do it without it. Uh, True Silver Champion, because fuck, it's still the best weapon in the game. And when Standard comes around, it will return to being the best weapon in the game. Consecration. Okay, there's a lot of little shit minions that we don't like. This deals with it. Old Murkai, again, see Murlocs. Solemn Vigil. This is a really great drawing mechanic. Um, because of quality and Wild Pyromancer are so dirt cheap, if you can get a good sized board clear off it, this is normally a free fucking draw all the time. And if you've got both of these in your hand and you get off the uh, combination, oh man, how good do you feel drawing four cards for free? Pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. All right, moving on. Antique Heobot, you're going to want to buffer a lot of that initial damage until you can get your board sweeps. So Antique Heobot fills that role very nicely. And we're all going to miss it once Standard goes, oh wait, no we're not, because we're getting something else. That's zero mana, but it doesn't give us a board. But fuck it, we can use it to proc a goddamn um, Wild Pyromancer to clear some shit too, so... I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. But yeah, it's actually going to be missed. But I really like this card. The 3-3 body does a lot of work. And the 8 heal is nothing to laugh at. Sludge Belcher! The only taunt in this deck. And I've already explained one scenario of how I like using it. But many a times I do put this down on 5 just to kind of buffer out until I can get to my board sweep. Which, you know, helps. All right, lay on hands, card draw plus a heal. All right, guys, I want you to count here. That's 8 plus 16, that's 24, plus another 8. That's 28 life. So basically, you're playing with 58 life in this deck. If you're telling me you can't get to turn 10 with 58 life, you're, there's something wrong with you. Either that or they are just damn fucking lucky. And of course, anything can happen. Um, again, you, you need this for a Murloc deck. This card changed a lot of things when it came to Paladin. Um, interestingly enough, I still think this card is only slightly broken because of all the mechanics and tools that this deck can utilize in order to make this work. And yeah, it really is just a pain to experience. All right, so now we're gonna get through the playthrough. Now, just to warn you, all right, first one's a hunter, second one's a paladin. This is gonna be about 20 minutes or so of uh, play footage. <sighs> and there will be a misplay, and we'll point it out. No, it burns with roll. All right. So we keep the true silver champion and the equality just because we want to have at least one of our board sweep options available. And true silver champion, getting that out uh, to remove and heal back, it's going to be really important, especially against hunter. All right. So I go with the loot hoarder just because having a board first tends to make a world of difference. Not to mention the fact I want to draw into the answers that I need. I've got the equality, I want the wild pyromancer. This also forces him to play Glaive Zuka without a viable target. This is not an ideal situation for him. Normally in that situation he would have just used his hero power, but now I forced him to go this route. And there we go. We've got one of our clear pieces already done. Well 
Now, I think I'm being clever here, and I'm just going to Doomsayer, which will basically forgo him having a turn four. Right? Right? Well, trust me. Paladins aren't the only one who could fuck with somebody's life. I thought it was so clever. It's getting hard. He goes for the 50-50. Fails, he, but he gets a second 50-50. That doesn't fail. So that kind of sucked. Now I'm not ready to board clear yet, so we're gonna go with the true silver champion, just for the removal option. Boom. And we're doing okay. We can heal back up to 29 if he doesn't use his hero power. So he brings on Mr. Sludgy. Not much I could really do on that. So we're just gonna heal. And we got our second equality. So now all we gotta do is either get another Wild Pyromancer or a Consecration. And we'll have both sets ready to go. Alright, so here comes Mr. Hymane. Now I don't really like that. I don't really have a overly good play here other than board clearing. Now, I opt not to attack the Sludge Belcher first. There's a reason for this. I'm playing up against a deck that has the ability of constantly whittling me away, so my life total really does matter. So rather than taking one damage, I opt to gain one life back. It made sense to me at the time. And we've got any Finn. Unfortunately, we haven't really played any Murlocs. Alright, so here comes the Huffer. And he's got enough mana to make it really, really sting. Ah, uh, this hurts, ladies and gentlemen. Especially right after the equality play. But RNG loves us. And now we are able to play a war leader uncontested with him only having three cards in his hand. Well Put this apple on your head. That doesn't feel good. I'm considering possibilities here. And then we get the consecration off the top deck. It's like RNG was just all in our favor. Now, we're trying to be a little bit aggressive here because one of the things I found is you don't always have to get all your Murlocs out in order for it to be overly effective. And there's the one card I didn't want to see, especially considering he's using Hound Masters. That card, now that I've used both of my equalities, is a little bit of a problem. Alright. So, I'm hoping to force him to trade. I don't really have a good play here. I haven't gotten any of my blue gills. I haven't really gotten any of the stuff I really needed. So he's going to do this trade here just to get the card draw. Luckily, I do know this deck, and I was kind of waiting for that to pop. But unfortunately, I have no good play. The other Peacekeeper does not really do me any good, so I go for the two-card draw. And we get the perfect answer right there. This will stop his drawing very nicely. And... I'm considering the merits of going for another two versus putting down... The Acolyte of Pain. So I opt to go for another two. I get the Murloc War Leader and I get a Sludge Belcher. Now I know that Sludge Belcher is pretty much dead if I play it down. But the War Leader also opens me up to do some really fun stuff here. That High Man is going to be somewhat problematic, especially if he gets the other Houndmaster. So I'm looking at my life total and it's getting a little scary. So we're going to put down the High Man. Uh -huh. 
and we're gonna use this to clear out that. Now, he can't easily get through here. He can't easily get through. So I'm, I'm running a really fine edge. Any moment now, he could double kill command me and really just start burning my face. Luckily, I've got tools for that that can allow me to gain back that 10 life instantly. But still, it's not a really fun position you want to be in. Goes with the trade. Alright. So I'm looking at an Aldor Peacekeeper play here. And then I get old Murkai. And things just suddenly change. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna shrink that down. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I actually have everything I need. Unfortunately, I lost count of what I was doing. This is one of the slight fundamental problems with this deck. If you're not counting how many Murlocs you've played, then you're going to be possibly missing lethal. Now, with this kill, I have exactly everything I technically need to win this game. But I want to make sure. I really want to make sure. And here I'm presented with a perfect board clear and I'm going to take that and I'm going to heal back now right now I could play it and win until Loatheb came down We're going to remove that off the board. We're going to gain back the two we just lost from his hero power. Now, we're going to opt not to use uh, a token here because we do have to get rid of one of our minions. We have five Murlocs coming back. I take you down with me. Well, I'm almost out of cards. All right. That's pain no matter where you're from. 22 damage. Bam. Now there was a misplay there, obviously. And that misplay was not counting. But the low attempt really did kind of slow us down on that. So we kind of had to at least wait one more turn. But we ran a very fine edge there. And at any time, he could have easily have gotten like double kill command and totally wrecked us all right now here comes the warning this is a very very slow match this guy took a lot of time deciding what he was going to do and yeah some of the the sequencing kind of fucked with him now this is a beautiful opening hand this is a hand you want to see most of the time Now, he doesn't want to use coin. He wants to hold on to that. Mind if I roll me? Now, if he just... If he has it, this would be a perfect time to go muster for battle. Which apparently he didn't have. So we're going to play this down and hope he top decks it. Now this pause tells me exactly that, that he did top deck it and he wants to play it right now, but it's like, ugh. But he could also still play a true silver champion, negate the advantage that I could possibly have if he does have a muster for battle. Let me think. And he takes a really long time in thinking this one out, ladies and gentlemen. Really long time. Ah! 
Now, does he have the balls to do it? Does he have the true silver champion? What's he going to do? Reporting for duty. He went for the muster. Of all the plays, that was not the best. So we go for one card draw. Two card draws. And we're just going to move that. And because of that, we were able to get Old Murkai out, which is one of those tools we wanted to get. So one Blue Guild Warrior, Old Murkai. None may steal our secrets. Go ahead and kill that, which is going to force him to trade into that, again weakening his face, but he is going to hit us for three at minimum. Now he opts to go full fucking swing here, so I need a quality, something fierce. And I did not get. So, the best line of play is actually to get rid of that, which will continuously cause me problems. And of course that secret keeper tells me I'm dealing with the secret paladin, and this is the turn where they normally play one card. Did not have it. But he does have most likely an event, if I remember correctly. So he draws me into a consecration. And there's the equality, ladies and gentlemen. This is exactly what I wanted to see. was not Avenge. So now I'm a little concerned that that might be something else. Yep. Now, there's one misplay right there. I could have easily played Solemn Vigil for free, did not do it. That was a misplay, ladies and gentlemen. There's our second Blue Guild Warrior. Still not Avenge. Competitive spirit. Ugh. This is where things are starting to take a turn to the south. But we are okay. We've got the tools to battle through this. Definitely have the tools to battle through this. We'd have had more tools if I hadn't fucked up. Alright. So he's just gonna eat more to his face. But he's also going to hit us for 7 damage. This is not ideal in any way, shape, or form. So we gotta come up with a way of mitigating some of this down. And we don't really have a way. So we're gonna heal. And... We're just gonna go straight face. Now his life total is getting a little low. He's really got to be concerned. He's seen Murlocs. He knows the score. We're about to go into turn 10. He's really got to think about what he's going to do. Hmm. So 
it takes another point of damage. And he plays on secret. See, I wonder which one this could possibly be. And I got greedy. Now here's the ultimate misplay. Playing humility before trying to do this. So the correct sequence would have been to go with the consecration first, then the humility, then the doomsayer. But I fucked up. So I sit here and go, well, what's the likelihood that he's got, you know, one specific card? So we're going to go ahead, draw two more cards. All right, cool. So he needs Blessing of Kings right now to basically smash through that, stop the board clear, and start really pushing damage to my face. Oh, look, he got Blessing of Kings. So my misplay is looking like it's really going to punish the shit out of me now. But I get an outdoor peacekeeper off the top. The that outdoor peacekeeper was huge. It's amazing how much the top decks can really save your ass in this deck. But again, that would not have been an issue had I played correctly both times. My misplay. Heal and draw some more cards. There's one anything. There's a Doomsayer. Alright, we've got a combination I really love, which is Doomsayer and Sludge Belcher. It's one of my preferred combinations. I like it a lot. Which, by the way, I have enough right now to actually win the game if I can get through that taunt. So we have to work on getting through that taunt. Reporting for duty. All right. So we're going to go Sludge, Doomsayer, and we're going to bring out a token. This will stop any, well, won't stop, but will lessen the sh uh, possibilities of him being able to use a Muster for Battle to kind of ping down and get enough damage on that. But instead, he doesn't have that. He has to go full damage on this. And it goes for the board clear, leaving everything perfectly clear for me to just go anything and say goodnight. And that was a match. And yes, the meek shall inherit the Hearthstone. Back from your adventures? Yes, unfortunately that video was so long that I had to restart the client. It happens that way sometimes, guys. But anyway, I hope you like this video. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Till next time, this is Shiv saying, stay safe, have fun, may orange Jesus bless you, and if not... Pre-Cthulhu.